Hey y'all, it's Morgan, and today I'm going to take you along as I spin some galaxy-inspired yarn. I've been spinning for several years since I was in college, and I've been hooked from the beginning. But before I get to that story, let me show you what we're going to be working with. I'm using this scrumdiddlyumptious, squishy, textured fiber from Um Nasheed over on Instagram. They have so many beautiful and unique spinning fibers to choose from. I really like this one in particular because it reminded me of a galaxy, especially with all the little sparkly bits in it. And I'm going to be spinning with this hand-painted bottom whorl drop spindle from Cedar Grove Ranch. This is my first time using it and I'm very excited. The plan here is to spin some chunky art yarn with lots of character and this is not what I'm used to at all. So I'm excited to give it a try and see how it turns out. I'm going to start by tearing this into strips to make it easier to manage. And I'm not being too perfect with it. This is going to be some wonky yarn, there's going to be some thin, there's going to be some thick. So, not worried about how perfect the tear is. Then I'm going to get started with preparing the leader, hooking it on and adding some twists to it. Then I'm going to join my fiber to the leader and get the twist going. Spinning yarn consists of a few steps, which are adding twist and drafting the fiber. And this will determine how thick or thin your yarn is. And then you gotta wind it onto your spindle. But you pretty much just repeat these few steps until you're out of fiber. The hardest part is at the beginning when you're still figuring out how your fiber works and trying to figure out the twist and it's not always perfect. <laughs> Which is why it's important to know how to join two ends of fiber because inevitably you're going to have to do this. And it's pretty much just stuffing the fluffy parts together and adding twist. And sometimes it takes a little bit of finagling to make sure that the join is secure. I'm using the park and draft method, which is where you add some twist and then you put the spindle between your legs to stop it from unspinning. And then I'm drafting the yarn and then I'm going to add more twist and repeat. Some people will just let it drop and spin, but I'm not as confident in that. I'm using relatively low twist since this is a bit of a thicker yarn. The thinner the yarn is, the more twist is required to keep it held together. And it also depends on what fiber you're using because some fibers have short lengths and some are longer. So it kind of depends on what you're using as well. I'm spinning in a clockwise direction and then later when I apply it, I will spin it in a counterclockwise direction. Alright, I think that covers the basics of drop spindling. So now let's talk about how I even got into spinning in the first place and get a change of scenery. So I taught myself to crochet and knit when I was in elementary school almost 20 years ago and even did a school fair project about the wonders of yarn. And throughout the years, yarn activities have been a rotating special interest of mine, like crochet knitting and latch hook and pretty much anything that had to do with yarn, I was willing to give a try and I always had quite the stash of yarn. Then, when I was in college, I went to my first fiber fair, which is pretty much this event where there are vendors with hand-dyed yarn and yarn from their own farm and all kinds of fiber to spin and there's weaving equipment and it's just everything you could ever imagine that has to do with fiber arts, it's there. And I happened to win a raffle where I got my very first spinning fiber but I didn't know how to do it yet. I ended up finding a beautiful wheel on Craigslist for a good deal, and the lady even gave me some fiber and showed me the basics on how to use it, but I struggled to figure it out. Luckily for me though, my university had a craft center where they offered a lot of classes, including spinning classes, and we first learned on a drop spindle, which was much easier as a beginner than a spinning wheel because it takes a bit of practice to figure out drafting and getting the twist right and 
It's a lot easier to do when you're not having to also work your feet and manage the speed of the wheel. This quickly turned into an obsession and I got a full fleece straight from the sheep, cleaned it, and then I prepped it by carting it at the craft center and I wanted to make a sweater out of it. This project took me forever to spin and knit and this was also my first time knitting a sweater. So I'd say this project was a bit ambitious, but it was so satisfying once I finished it. I made a video where I talk about the making of the sweater. If you want to check it out, I'll link it down below. Eventually, I went on a streak where I bought so many fleeces and prepped fiber that I had enough spinning material to last years, possibly decades. But then, in an unexpected turn of events, I got super sick for a couple of years, which put a hold on my fiber frenzy. After a slow recovery, I'm finally getting back into activities and hobbies like spinning yarn, and it feels so good. This galaxy yarn is my first spinning project since getting back to it, and I loved the textures and the feel and all of the colors. It was just, you know, making my brain very happy. And now that I have finished up all of the fiber, I'm gonna ply it. I'm using a cheap dollar store basket to hold my spindle, and I'm gonna be plying with this opal metallic thread and I'm using my spinning wheel to ply, makes this much faster. This is the one that I got off Craigslist. It's a Kromsky Prelude, and I love it. It's the perfect size for me. I've had it for years. It's gotten a little bit dusty though, so I'm gonna give it a quick wipe, but I definitely need to give it an actual tune-up before I do a big project. So first I'm gonna use this hook and thread the leader then I'm going to add my thread and my yarn to the leader and I've already started the twist in this. It's very similar to starting on the drop spindle, but this time the twist is in a counterclockwise direction. I had a little bit of trouble getting it started. I needed to loosen the tension and took a little bit of fiddling to figure it out. I'm using my back hand to keep the thread and the yarn separate before I'm ready to ply them, otherwise it becomes a giant mess. I could have plied this on my spindle, but in order to do that I would have had to have wound off the yarn that I already spun onto something like toilet paper rolls to free up my spindle, and that's just a lot more work than I felt like doing, but it's pretty much the same process. The wheel just makes it a lot faster. And this is what it looks like finished on the bobbin, but now I need to wind it off. I'm gonna use this thing, it's called a Knitty Knotty. To use it, you hold the end of the yarn in the middle, and then you wrap it around. And there's a certain order you go in. And this thing makes it so that when you take your yarn off, it's in a nice long like skein, I guess would be the word. And it makes it easy to measure how much yardage you have because one full circle is like two yards so you just count how many strands you have and then multiply it by two and then that's your yardage and what I'm doing here is tying the yarn in a figure eight knot and I'm gonna do this four times to make sure that I don't end up with a tangled mess this keeps everything nice and together and I don't know if you can tell here, but the yarn is twisting back on itself. It's still got some active twist in it. It's not what they would call a balanced yarn, but that will get fixed when it gets washed. Speaking of which, let's go wash this thing. I've got a bowl of hot water here, and I'm gonna use this soap from Tuft, and I'm just gonna swirl it around a little bit until the water gets nice and soapy. And if you don't have wool-specific soap, that's fine, you can use Dawn for this, or whatever soap you have on hand. Now I'm going to gently press my yarn into the water and help the bubbles come out. And then I'm going to let that soak for a bit and let the yarn get really penetrated with the water and soap. And now I'm going to rinse it, and I'm only going to press the water out, I'm not going to wring it. And I'm going to use cool water to do this, and I'm not particularly worried about my yarn felting. I'm still going to press gently and not agitate it too much, so I'm not worried about the water running directly on it. But if you're worried about your fiber felting, 
you can get another bowl of clean water and let it soak again. Now I'm going to help balance the twist by firmly pulling on either end. And small warning, this does tend to send water flying. And you can see here that the yarn is not twisting back on itself. It's much straighter. Look at how deliciously it just folds back on itself. Ugh. And lastly, I'm gonna hang it up to dry. You can wrap it up in a towel and press to help speed this along. This is it all dry and finish. And there's a surprise second skein. This is when I first attempted to spin the fiber. When I first got it, I tried on my wheel, but it wasn't working out for me. And you can see it's a bit thinner and more consistent. I'd say there's less character to it. I personally like the one on the drop spindle better. I feel like it's fluffier and there's more texture. Let me know down in the comments which one you prefer, the drop spindle on the left or the spinning wheel on the right. I'm excited to use these, I'm thinking mushrooms something, but we'll see. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe. I hope to see you again soon in the next video. Bye!